The following video contains many foul mouth diatribes of an unenlightened mind you have been warned. <laughs> oh man, I just got finished done taking a shit right here, man. Oh, I feel much better. Let's go out and see what we got to ride today. Oh god, what what is this? Oh, where am I? Water? Why is there water in the desert? Water in the desert? What the fuck is going on? That's alright. Let's get on this thing. See what we can uh, do here. It's a beautiful day out. It's almost like 55 degrees. Wind's blowing at about 60 miles an hour. And it blew my receipt all the way over here. I don't want to be a litter bug. What did I buy? What? Oh, I don't care. That's not... Man, who needs this? Anyways, we're going to take this little thing out for a spin into some 60 mile an hour headwinds and see what kind of top speed we can get without getting blown off the damn road. What this big sauce piece of shit? What the hell is going on? So hello there boys and girls. We are out here on this blustery day. Nice, windy, kind of nice day. Literally, the wind is, is terrible today. I, I was going <laughs> to ride into Reno, but I can't even get on the highway because I could barely hold 60, and I'm being blown all over the road. So, I'm just gonna basically cruise around and talk about stuff. So this is basically gonna be the real first impressions video of this bike. Why I bought it versus many other much better bikes that you could get for the same, even less money than this bike. And the main re reason for me is because it reminds me of the CB550 that I rebuilt that I no longer have. And it's on the other side of the country with a new proud owner, hopefully not falling apart due to my build quality. But whatever. And that's even the same reason why it's in the same colors as that other bike. That bike was gray and chrome as well because I basically stripped off all the paint right down to the bare metal and clear coated it. It just had a nice look to it and I kind of missed it. So that's why basically why I got this. I could have gotten the Rebel 500. I sat on it. It was a bit too low for me out here. I can take this on some of these fire roads and whatnot, and these gravel roads, and I'll be fine because the height clearance on this bike is a little bit higher than the Rebel 500. Of course, the Rebel 500 will do 100 uh, easily, but this bike's top speed, probably once it's broken in, probably be maybe 80 downhill, <laughs> but that is fine. I can cruise at 70 and I usually don't ride faster than that on the highway just because of the winds out here. Um, it's it's kind of not nice. We're going to pull over here and take a look at it. A little bit of that beautiful analog cluster. Now this bike is pretty much as old school as you can get. Which, incidentally, is something I liked. I like having a Kickstarter on a bike. I don't know why. It's just because of the bikes that I've had. I've had Kickstarters. Um, I'm also partial to cruisers because I've pretty much only had cruisers. To say that I haven't ridden sport bikes, it's just that I think I've overcome my need for speed, and I know myself too well. And the Kawasaki Vulcan 800 that I have, I could hit probably a buck ten and I found myself inching up to that red line way too much for comfort from a legal standpoint we're just saying allegedly but I, I think there's really nothing wrong with these slower bikes you really don't need more than a 500 technically as it'll get you anywhere you need to go so the Royal Enfield was not my first choice but I decided to go to the Eurocycle in Reno and check out some Triumphs actually initially, but this was there and the price point was right. So it kind of worked out. Now, so far I've been using uh, Moto Man's method of breaking this bike in, and this bike takes a while to break in. It takes about, uh, 
they're set anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred before the engine is nice and broken in. This has a uh, one of those UCD engines. It's not the same engine as the previous bikes. I think they switched them in like maybe 2010 to this new version that has the uh, fuel injection. This model has the ABS as well, which frankly is not that bad. A um, little bit weird on off-road-ish type of gravel roads like this one, but it does its job well. The main issue that people have been complaining about with this bike is the vibrations. Now, this bike so far, I'm at 200 some odd miles in, has dropped a lot uh, from first thing out of riding away at the dealership. Basically, I think you have to follow Motorman's method with this bike and run it hard because if you do low revs, it never really seems to get that high rev range smoothness that it has now. And incidentally, right now, the low rev range seems to have the most vibration, which is something I have to work on, which is why I'm running slower on this gravel road because at top speed, this seems to be pretty fine right now. There's a little buzz still there, but I'm, I followed Motoman's method and I did the first little change around 100 miles. So right now, I am running some pretty crappy semi-synthetic oil in this thing. Eventually I will go full synthetic, but not until I have broken in about maybe probably 1,500 miles. So yeah, and also um, there were quite a bit of shavings in this, so more so than the TT250. The TT250 didn't have like hardly any, actually. So people that are concerned about that, at least for my bike, there was, hardly was like barely any metal on the, the magnetic drain plug. One of the things I have to do on this yet is loosen and retighten the engine bolts, which incidentally that was one of the things that happened on the CB550. Uh, initially when I was putting that together when I did the engine swap, I did have to loosen and retighten those uh, after a while, and then that did help the vibration on that bike too. So, again, this reminds me of my old bike. Now, some people complain about the handling on this bike, but to me, this bike handles just like any other cruiser. Um, you just look where you want to go, and it's going to go there slowly. Um, is it flickable like a sport bike, or even like the standards, or? Compared to the TT250, of course not. It's a slower bike just because of its age. You know, it's a 60 year old machine basically. It hasn't been, really been changed or updated at all. Um, and you just have to plan accordingly when riding it. It's a slower, everything Everything is about smoothness and not speed with this bike. By the way, no, I'm not getting rid of the TT250 just yet because there's plenty of unexplored desert that needs to be explored on that bike so we will be doing that in the future but for right now I'm having fun on a road bike this I want to take on some longer trips although I'm gonna have to set it up for that uh, I definitely will be getting a windscreen and not sure what type of bags I'll be getting but some sort of bags I really don't like riding with a backpack I'll tell you what sucks though I had some really nice gloves from Lowe's that I got probably like two years ago there were a mixture of like leather and fleece like there was a, a, a leather exterior with a fleece interior and they were wind resistant and they were awesome and I was a dumbass because I changed the oil and I didn't have any gloves set aside so I just used those and I got oil all over them and I threw them away and I was like oh, I'll just get another pair and they don't have them anymore and it freaking pisses me off because those gloves were awesome so now I have these crappy thin fleece gloves with little patches of leather that are pieces of crap and I got to go online and order that crap hopefully if they have some back stock but yeah I digress oh yeah where were we, where were we? the bike yeah so some quick things that I hate about this bike these controls these controls oh my god if you know anything about cheap bikes you know these controls they are the same Chinese generic controls that they put on every single bike this, they are the exact same ones that are on that well this might be a shittier version I don't know sorry pardon my French but anyways 
They are the crappy versions, although I did put these on the, the CP550. But they are the same controls. And there's something with this indicator switch that does not positively click when you want to turn it off into the center position. So you go to turn left or right. Fine, it turns on. Then when you go to turn off that signal, it like it skips. So you'll you'll turn from left all the way to right unless you barely touch it. And man, I hate that because then I'm driving and I then you know for freaking 100 miles and then I turn and it's like oh I gotta make a turn here. Oh, mean I was driving with my turn signal on for the last hundred miles and yes, no, I am not the Chinese driver. And I'm not in Chinatown, but that is what always happened to me when I ride this bike. But that is something that always pisses me off. The other thing that pisses me off about this bike is the gas cap. And I understand why they did it. Alright? You know, bikes from this era had the locking little, you know, you slide around that quarter size thing. You stick your key in there and you open it up and it pops off and that's that. CB550 had that. The original version of this bike had that. What happens with those things is that over time that little quarter size swivel thing that covers the key lock, it just gets loose. And so then you, you're riding and you hear that tap, 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 tap buzz that you have it. So what they decided to do is just say, screw all that, I'm just going to make it a little screw plug and that's it. No locking gas cap. It just screws shut. Now, this is kind of interesting because it's not like you can get in there and siphon out fuel. Nobody can do that. However, there is nothing to keep anybody from just taking your gas cap or just dumping crap in your tank. And I probably shouldn't be saying this, but whatever. I will probably have to do something about that gas cap. Maybe find an old model type just because I don't like the fact that anybody can just walk up and unscrew this thing. And there's a little like metal tab on the inside, so like I said, you can't stick anything in it. But if you wanted to pour some sand and grit, you could if you wanted to. So don't do that. Do that to my bike. Better be very fast on your feet. Anyways, that's pretty much it with this bike. Lastly, when I purchased this bike, I did not even know that there was a sidecar for this bike. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a sidecar. That is a thing that will happen in the distant future. But, keep your eye out for that. Um, also, there's some pretty good uh, off-road tires that I can put on this, which might be another thing. We'll see. Anyways. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the future. And don't forget, my children, lean into the wind with all your might. It was death row. Yeah, drop fifth and third just to keep up at a highway speed. This wind. Fuck is this shit?